you got to learn these things, and I, it's better to learn them early. I think my closest one, I was, I was actually just telling this story. I got burned. Gosh, this was a long time ago, 15 years ago. I got burned because this client swore up and down that they did X in the software that we had built. And I had no proof that they had, in fact, not done that. And from that moment on, I became an absolute beast at logging everything that my software does into a logging software because I wasn't going to have that happen again. I log everything to an obscene amount so that, and, and it's always traceable back to the person using the software that I built so that when, the, and this has happened since then, hey, I didn't do that. And I'm like, mm, yeah, you did. Here's the proof. Okay, so, so I don't get talking about the client doing something. It's then... the, the end user. It's like the end okay. user. They said that they didn't click that button. That's the most common. I didn't delete that. I never deleted that. What are oh. you talking about? Your <laughs> software is broken. That's, that, yeah. that's generally what happens. Your software is trash because you deleted all my stuff. Here's where you click that button, sir. And I send that to my client, right? which is generally not the end user, of course. Yeah. So that they – because I don't – generally, we don't interface with the end user because that's not our role. Um, and then they can take that up and talk to them. But that was a, a lesson that I learned is that you got to – you got to – in development, you got to protect yourself. Because – what we're doing is zeros and ones. It's just, it's ethereal by its, or ephemeral. <laughs> Use one of my wife's words there. Um, it's ephemeral because it's just gum and gone, right? And so if you don't log it, now it's your word versus his. And you never want to get into that situation with a client or an end user or anybody where it's your word versus them. It's, you got to proof whenever possible. Sometimes it's not possible. Well, How do just, you encourage someone to not get overwhelmed when they do fail? Like, what is a good step to, I, I mean, it's clearly, if I fail, you shouldn't do the same thing again. Okay. But how do you, how do you turn that into a life lesson, right? That's the question. That, yeah. I think it's just literally kind of sucking it up and not being afraid of it because chances are you're going to fail again. Maybe not the same thing, but you're going to fail and you're going to keep failing. And then you're going to learn from it, whether you like it or not. I mean, as long as you can not be afraid of that part of like, uh Oh, what if this is wrong? Making you not even try. You know what I mean? Some people get that in their head where it's like, well, last time I was put on a big project like this and didn't know a hundred percent of what I was doing, I failed miserably. But then maybe you could look back and say, Hey, you didn't really fail that miserably. You just kind of messed up and learned from it. And then now you know so much more about it that it, you gain experience from it. So it's like all the cliches and all the things you can see on social media about like failing forward and <laughs> failure is just learning in disguise and all that stuff. But I think the key to it is making sure it doesn't just turn that little, I'm afraid of this forever switch in your brain. You know what I mean? Sure. It sure. doesn't become a fear. I think when I think about failure and the, now this sounds a bit pie in the sky, but the best way I think you can handle it is to stop, go after the fact. Obviously, in the middle of it, you just got to get through it. But take a moment after the fact and think why you failed and really ask yourself that question. I don't think enough people ask themselves that question. Why did I fail? Oh, it's because I did, in your case, I didn't, uh, I told a boring story. No, <laughs> the reason I failed was This because... is why I'm co-host. <laughs> 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 but you... You realized, okay, I need to have been more upfront with someone because you never know someone's going to switch out or whatever, right? And you, you recognize that. Why did I fail? If you ask yourself that question, then you're going to learn how to improve next time. If you just keep wandering around, you're going to keep hitting the same wall. And yeah. that's where I think that's where you've got to really take – if you're a, someone who's aiming to improve yourself, and I'll tell you that – Talk about separating the two groups of people, people who want to succeed and want to do what it takes to succeed. And those people who are just stumbling around, right? That's, that's probably the 80, 20 rule. There may be 20% if you're being very generous of people who truly want to succeed and will do what it takes to get there. Meaning learn from their mistakes, take those steps, those uncomfortable steps of self-reflection. Why did I fail at this? What can I do better next time? Because that project's coming down the pipe. You want that big project, right? You want them to give you yeah. a big project, something that gives you more responsibility so that you can succeed the next time. 
Well, okay, so this is what I did wrong last time. So this time I'm going to be much more thorough about that. If you can take those little steps and keep a little cheesy journal or something, I'm not saying journal, journal, but notes, something, it will help you improve. Just writing it down, that, that's the weird thing about, I'm not a journaler, I shouldn't say this uh, with any authority, but what I have found is when I do write in my little notebook, my little notes or something, if I'm in a client meeting, right, you know, my little notebook I talk about all the time, when I write that stuff down, as opposed to, oh, I might remember it, but I, and I don't, you don't have to write it all down, but it's, it's little sparks of memory. Yeah, little triggers. And it makes that... such, such an impact. If someone had a question, Gary, what would they do? They could email us at hello at thebigpixel.net, or they can go to any of our social media channels or YouTube page, leave a comment, post a question, whatever you want. <laughs>